Attention eyes and ears. This is a public service announcement. Anybody, I repeat, anybody has the tools to get a miniature painted to tabletop standard. Not only that, you can do so with minimal time investment. Welcome to Marvel Crisis Protocol's Dr. Octopus Speed Painting Guide, where we help you find the sweet spot between speed and quality at the paint station. To do so, we're going to be using Citadel's Contrast Paints that provide a one-coat solution that mimics the look of what would usually take two steps, that being basing and shading. But because you might want to use a different range of paints, we'll pop the names of the closest equivalents up on screen as we go. First things first, then you need to prime your model. We're opting to use the complimentary Wraithbone spray can as it gives a more natural and organic look when the contrast is applied. Of course, if you plan to use a different type of primer, make sure it's a white or off-white because these paints do not work on darker tones. The first actual paint pot we reach for is some Iron Hand Steel, a lighter silver base paint than we've used before on all the tentacles, the belt rim and even the grate on the base. There's just no method that we're happy to recommend painting metallics that doesn't involve traditional acrylic paints. This is a fairly straightforward step as all the relevant parts of the models are either pronounced or raised. Just don't forget, like I did, to do the bulk of the back plate that houses the tentacles as well, leaving just the power source in the middle unpainted. We then have our first contrast paint, Iron Jaws Yellow, for the boots and shoulder pads. Once again, there's nothing particularly onerous here. In fact, the whole model is actually a joy to paint insofar as there was very little in the way of intricate parts to it. And as he says that, we get to a finicky part. A more or less dot of Blood Angels Red in the middle of the goggles is what we opted for. Yes, you can probably use any mid-range red for this as the surface coverage is so small, but for completeness, here we are. Some Abaddon black on the rims of the glasses require a small brush and a steady hand. It should also handily deal with any red that accidentally bled over onto the rims, without the need to go back over it with Wraithbone and start again. As you can see, the frames meet the hairline at some point, so just eyeball it as best you can. Speaking of the hair, we opted for Garagak Sewer here. Of course, hair colour can often be a personal choice, so a slightly lighter, gore grunter fur could be a worthwhile alternative. Note as well that Doc Ock has a nice dome-like barnet, so again, just decide where the edge of the hairline is all the way round and jobs are good in. Galoman Flesh is the last paint to finish off the face and of course the back of the head, because he has that somewhat unusual mop top. Be wary of pulling here because the graduations on the face are prime targets for this sort of thing. From small surfaces we can stretch out a bit with warp lightning on the rest of the outfit. This was a little bit darker than I'd wanted, so in the optional second part of the video we're going to highlight a bit more comic book brightness into it. For now, remember to apply a healthy amount on the brush, but try to keep the brush on the model for as long as you can when spreading the paint as contrast paints can get a bit streaky if you try and touch them up too much. The and Yellow is at first glance a strange choice for the power orbs on the belly, the back plate and on the end of the tentacles, but if you go against the principles of painting 101 and let the paint actively pull in the recesses, you can actually get a passable and subtle glowing effect, ultimately giving you an end product that's acceptable with absolutely zero effort. As we revisit the metallics, a pot of Nuln Oil, be sure you don't spill it, is on hand to apply a shade effect and give some depth to the grates and the tentacles. Of course you'll want to revert to type and make sure to avoid any obvious pulling and then you can move on. We finish all of these concrete type bases off with a generous dollop of Basilicanum Grey across the whole thing, even the sides of the base. It's not particularly pretty as flat surfaces aren't exactly contrast paint's best friend, but again, it does a job and looks a darn slight better than no paint at all. And there you have Dr. Octopus Tabletop ready in no time at all. Yes, contrast paints require some getting used to in certain instances, but they're still an excellent tool for casual painters. Now, whilst that might be a completely fine place to finish, 
We're going to continue with Doc Ock on the paint station and add a few highlights and finishing touches to the model with some non-contrast paints. Nothing too excessive in the spritter of this video, but for just a little extra effort, we can take this bad boy to the next level. We're almost going from top to bottom here as we reach for a base paint, still Legion Drab. One of my go-to browns we're using to apply some highlights to the hair. Try and pick out the raised parts and follow the strands of hair as best you can, and there you have the first step done. KDM Flesh Tone will bring some more life to the face. Again, the nose, the raised parts of the cheeks and mouth, and the ears are all obvious places to highlight, and the rest will just be a judgement call. Remember, start with less and apply more as you see fit. Flash gets yellow we then liberally applied on the boots and gloves. With the jagged and patched nature of both, the areas that needed highlighting more or less pointed themselves out. Not quite paint by numbers, but almost. To deal with the main body of the costume, we opted for some moot green. We highlighted more than we might have usually during this step because we felt the warp lighting was a bit too dark. And so ideally a second highlight on top of this would have been the order of the day, but that would simply rip the piss out of the idea of speed painting. Still, once again start shy if you're not sure, wait for the paint to dry and apply some more highlights if you don't think there's enough. We're almost there then when we apply Administratum Grey to our brush and then wipe off the bulk of the paint so that we can dry brush the concrete on the base. Make sure for flat surfaces like this you really do get the bulk of the paint off, otherwise there'll be very little place to hide for the unsightly streaks that'll find themselves staring back at you. We then finish with some Abaddon Black around the edge of the base because well the dollop of Basilicanum Grey that we applied earlier will just not do. And that as they say is a finished model and proof that you don't need to be a whiz at this to get good results. I'm sure many of you will be happy with just the contrast paint steps but it just goes to show what can be achieved either way with minimal time investment. Stay tuned for more speed painting guides, alas I've been the voice in your head and this video has ended.